All right. Coming at you with a new segment called News Cash. Basically, it is any and everything that I am interested in. And it spans from technology to media production, just whatever it is that I think is cool. I figured that this would be something fresh that I could try and see if you guys like it. So let me know what you think. First thing up on the list, Affinity is now purchased by Canva. Now, perusing the interwebs, Reddit, and all the rest of the jazz and what people are feeling and thinking uh, brings back the same kinds of feelings that Adobe and Figma were attempting to get together and do. And this one is pretty close to my heart as well because I specifically decided to work myself off of Adobe software so that I could have something that was just going to solve the really quick things that I needed to do. I didn't need the entire suite. I, I didn't want to pay 50 bucks a month to do basic things that maybe I would kick up twice a month for. And so started looking for alternatives and found that the affinity suite was actually pretty good for what it was that you, what you received. So I bought mine with a Christmas special and only paid $79.99 for it. And I got affinity, affinity publisher and Affinity Designer. Um, and I use both intermittently at, at different times. Now, I do still pay for Adobe software, but I only use the Adobe Lightroom Photoshop, you know, plugin because it's only $9.99 a month. And I think that that's definitely a bargain for what you get for it, primarily because Lightroom has yet to find a, a really good contender for what it can do. Um, that being said, Affinity did fill a really big hole when it came to like InDesign with the publisher suite. So let me know what you guys think about that. Um, I think it's interesting. The CEO is promising that the perpetual license is not going to go away, that they will be able to, for version three and on, continue to offer perpetual licenses where you pay one time fee and you own the software until the next upgrade. Next up on the list, if you haven't heard, this is another acquisition, uh, is Nikon purchasing RED. Now, I've never used a RED camera before. I've always been pretty much on the Panasonic Sony side of the house when it came to film work. But I found it particularly interesting that Nikon, being the player that they were in the photography field, and how their images always looked so much different than Canon at the time when Nikon and Canon were like, the big players in the game, for them to purchase a, a film company, a film uh, production company, I should say, in terms of, you know, the whole red suite with all the mag cards and everything that they do. I just thought it was kind of interesting that they just decided to, to flex their muscles on that. Um, check that out. Let me know what you think about that. I think it is definitely for the good. This is one of the purchases that I think would absolutely benefit Nikon um, to to get them kind of kicked up in that field because they were lagging behind and they've been producing some really nice um, camera gear. I just don't think that people know um, or care as much about it. So entering the cinema game uh, head head first, I think is is a really smart move on their behalf. Next up on the list is one of my favorite podcasts, which is the Design Better podcast. If you haven't heard of it, just go listen to all the seasons. Um, I think they're on season three right now. They have a plethora of really really great interviews with people who are leaders in the design space and have lots of personal and professional advice for anyone wanting to get better or upskill uh, in the design game. This podcast is probably one of the ones I put at the top of my list. The One of the uh, later episodes that they've done, um, is a few episodes back from where they are now, is with Autumn Durald Arkapal. I think that's how you say her name. Uh, she was the director of photography on um, the latest Loki series and Black Panther Wakanda forever and her insight into the process, you know, why she got into the game, I think is a really, really interesting story. And I think anybody could benefit from it. Um, that is interested in anything media or design. Um, 
just the creative process alone, I think is, is something that should be explored across all mediums. So check out that interview. I think you'll like it. Next up, we have the BTS segment or the behind the scenes segments where, you know, people give you a look at how they work. And I think this segment is, is one of my most favorite. Um, so I have three of them today. First is the WWC 23 design for spatial user interfaces by Apple. They came out with a 22 minute video that was just really, really in depth on how to do spatial design and, you know, had lots of recommendations for just creating uh, design paradigms in general. Uh, doing it what it is that I do on a regular, uh, I am within a, a team of designers and we are building our own design system. And so it was really interesting to see how they solved the problem of spatial design and made it available for both designers and developers at the same time in their rule sets. So check that video out. It is like, I watched the whole thing and was never bored. Like they, like each segment that they broke out, um, was just really, really interesting. And the presenters were really good as well. So y'all, y'all check that out. Next up is a behind the scenes look at a restaurant shoot. Uh, his name was Chris Adjtoni. If I'm butchering your name, please let me know. This dude like went all the way in. I really appreciate the fact that he took the time to do a behind the scenes while he was doing the work. I think making time and space for that when you are being paid to do a job, um, you know, shows like his dedication, his commitment to uh, showing the process. And he goes really, really in depth with the lenses that they use, the look that they were going after. The uh, they they used a combination of the Sony Venice and the FX3 uh, for this commercial, and then everything that it took to get the lighting um, where it needed to be at. I think it's very important to understand the different positions when it comes to film and lighting is like one of those areas where you really do need to respect the lighting side of the house when it comes to film. They pretty much are the reason why you can even get the look that you're getting. Um, lighting and electrical specifically. So you don't get electrocuted when you're on set. So really, really great breakdown. Check his stuff out. Links in the description. This one's a little bit older, but still a goodie. Uh, lighting for small shoots by Lewis Potts was just a really quirky look at how you can get um, a really, really nice look with uh, easy lighting techniques, if you will, and using the space around you. Um, I think one of my favorite parts is when they showed how they got the sandal flip. It's like a video that was showcasing sandals. And there's a time where a sandal is actually like flying towards a TV and hits the TV. And how they got that shot was just just the bee's knees. I, I love seeing that kind of stuff. Last up are peeps that I tend to follow uh, on YouTube. I think I'll have this segment kind of come in and out of the uh, newscast segments, but these are people that inspire me. Um, I regularly revisit their channel. Uh, some of them are new. Some of them are older people that I've been following for a while, but you should check them out, definitely. Uh, Blaine Westrup, check out his YouTube channel. These are all YouTube, by the way. Allier online, I've been following Allier for a while um, since his Ultralinks blog. I used to read really, really in-depth design stuff and um, really cool how he shows his, his journey as a designer and as an entrepreneur. Um, so check out his stuff. That's his second channel as well, by the way. And then of course, Lewis Potts has a bunch of stuff on his channel. So go check out all three of those. Let me know what you think about this segment, if it was helpful, it was interesting. Um, I love talking about other people in their uh, respective fields and just seeing the awesomeness that is the media community. So that's it for News Cash this time around. Let me know in the comments what you thought about it. If it was at all helpful to you, I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, please hit up those other creators. They have a wealth of knowledge and inspiration to give you. Uh, it's just amazing to see what the media community is doing right now. So until next time, I'm JD. Peace out and I'll catch you later.